behind Eddie, the, the, uh, this is an introduction to our historical tchotchkes. The first thing there is uh, the board game, Your Best Life Now by mm. Joel Osteen. Oh, praise him. This would be a low point in my recollection of the podcast era. We uh, maybe, literally... Maybe in, the, maybe in the history of the company. I, I, or I, I, uh, <laughs> podcasting. Maybe I, I hear about this and I still can't believe it happened. We, this, is, this is hubris and it's worse. <laughs> People listen to literally anything we do. I bet that we play a board game for an hour, and these idiots will listen. To you presented. So we did. We we did a show, and then oh we said, gosh. "Okay, turn your hit stop now, because we are opening up Joel Osteen's board game, and we're going to play it start to finish." There was a moment I remember that you had to hold up a little mirror. You picked. Yes. You laid on a certain spot. You had to hold up a mirror and say something affirming to yourself. Yes. Oh my god. Oh yeah. The other, the other thing is, I don't think you realize until you actually play a board game with the intention of recording audio, how little, how little dialogue actually happens during the course of a game. Right, because there's strategy to it. You know, you're thinking like about how to win. There's a lot of time to... F- B5. Yeah. No, no, a miss? Yeah. All right, your turn. Yeah, one of you gets your best life. The rest of you doesn't. Yeah, the rest of us were subjected to the other board game. We haven't played this on the podcast, but we have the Vatican. Yeah. Vatican, the board game right there, the Pope's board game. Um, uh, if you move to the Perfectly left, normal. we've got there above, uh, this terrible-looking face thing. It's uh, The name of it is the Florida Swamp Monster. It is a deer's rear end turned upside down and a face put into it. Gosh. The goatee is the tail of that the deer. That is messed it's, up. It's so horrible. Sad that you guys still have that. <laughs> it is terrifying. It has, I don't nothing, like it. it has nothing to do with the podcast. It's just uh, on Wait, the show. Can shelf. I just say that one of my first impressions, when I first came to intern at Relevant, uh, this was about, I don't know, like 10 years ago, I was a, a college student and I came to tour the office that was the one thing that left an impression on me, was that hideous uh, uh, swamp, Florida swamp. And I remember in my head thinking, this would be a cool place to work. <laughs> See, I, I had the uh, I had kind of the opposite reaction because that is one of the first things that made an impression on me, and I just found it very upsetting. <laughs> we uh, the the eyes are so piercing and demonic that we actually uh, for most of its uh, lifespan we have had a cowboy hat on it yeah. to cover the eyes, but the cowboy hat doesn't fit on the shelf, so we have exposed it's messed the, up. It is. We might we might have to turn it around. Yeah, Eve. When Eve and Lucy came in, and they were like, "Who is that man?" And I was like, "I don't." <laughs> it's our first president. I don't know. Lucy. What is that hell beast? <laughs> yeah. Okay, above it, uh, we've got we've got a bullfrog uh, that with a with an injured leg, uh, clearly referencing uh, Jesse's iconic uh, slice that he brought about Ice T and his wife Coco getting pulled over in the middle of the night because they were they were racing to the veterinarians for, to because their bullfrog had to have emergency knee surgery, and then w- the next week we realized he was reading the entire news clipping wrong. It was the bulldog. Uh, but <laughs> Jesse read 30 instances of the word bulldog and well, said bullfrog. Well, once again, it's a mistake that literally anyone can make. And I think it's a missed opportunity that we don't have a can of Arizona iced tea sitting next to the bullfrog. Oh, iced tea. Nice. Oh, we're going to have to do that. Smart. Iced tea's bullfrog. Or Classy. we could get a little tiny one and it'll be the bullfrog's iced tea. Because mm. <laughs> uh, that's how you read it. You're dyslexic. Um, <laughs> next to it, I'm going to give it to Eddie. Yeah, this is uh, the Samantha shoe. I actually... Uh, uh, for those of you that did not hear this story, the quick of it is when we moved into our new house, uh, it was clearly haunted. There were a lot of reasons for that. There was a murder um, in the driveway. Murder in the driveway. Someone had been yeah. killed in the driveway yeah. in 98 uh, or 88. <laughs> Anyhow, so uh, I crawl up into the attic for the first time and look to my left and sitting there is a perfect, clean, white child's patent leather shoe. But just uh, one. <laughs> just just one shoe. And I knew, like I knew I would feel cold spirits going through me as I slept at that moment. And Anyhow, I told the story on the show, <laughs> fake Twitter account, all of that good stuff. This is, I didn't touch it, and then I knew like it was video week one, and I climbed up to the attic, and I just like <laughs> pinky pinched it. It was like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, it's <laughs> the shoe. I took let, me it down. Ask, let me ask you guys this. Since, it, <laughs> since Eddie has brought clearly a haunted item that yeah. is possessed by some sort of spirits. Have you guys had weird things happen in the podcast studio? Yeah, nothing works. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's right It's right next to the Florida Swamp Monster Demon Eyes, and so this is our little yeah. occultic session right right next to you. <laughs> right. So, it's so. So, weird. so weird. Chad can't get the video to work. This explains everything. Yeah, we haven't heard from Shauna or Joy. We don't know where they are. Can yeah. I ask, was there 
really like honest to goodness a murder in the driveway of your house. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. If you Google my address, you it take when I was Googling our address before we bought the house, I Googled it to find it on Google Maps and it brought up the county that we live in, unsolved murders and the full outline of the murder. Now the good thing is the guy wasn't killed in the house since it was on the driveway. So you just yeah. wa- you just wash all that off. That's no big deal. Hose it down. If you've been killed in I the I didn't ha- realize it was unsolved. Oh, yeah, they don't know who killed this guy. A haunted driveway isn't quite as intimidating as a haunted house. <laughs> well, because we were like, <laughs> right. It seems, it seems so haphazard and lazy to murder someone in a driveway. Right. You know, like that's an indoor activity. It does. It does cause some problems, though, every time our kids do little chalk drawings and we come back out and then it's all just like angry devils. You know, the talk is all more... <laughs> But yeah, they had, they had, I could have sworn you drew hopscotch there, not a pentagram. <laughs> right. So here's mommy and daddy and Cthulhu. <laughs> so generally it's just inconvenient, but it's not that bad. Yeah. So, all right. So next to that, underneath it, we oh, have wow, that oil stain sure does look like it spells the words. I'm going to kill you. <laughs> uh, at, under that, uh, Nick, uh, Nick Fruling and Spencer Fruling sent us the artwork America. Uh, Canada's jorts. Mm. Uh, they illustrated it. Uh, they pixelated a certain aspect of the jort uh, region and put relevant media group Orlando, Florida on there. This image, this is the actual original piece that they gave us when they visited Florida from Canada, obviously. Um, this image has made it on the front page of Reddit multiple times uh, a year. I see it all the time yeah. in random places. Yeah, yeah it's, it's really So cool. there you go. Uh, it, that's the real deal. Over there, our gold record, our, the only gold record we've ever received. Uh, it was from Reliant K, and they misspelled relevant. So that's <laughs> that's why <laughs> we <laughs> kept it. <laughs> the We had such hubris, uh, they thought we should be humbled. Relevant. Um, we have a few mugs up at the top. We got the Order of the Bow mug. I have my... Um, uh, when I was in Palestine, deep in Palestine, I came across a uh, coffee shop called Stars and Stars Bucks. Stars and Bucks, yeah. And I uh, got a got a <laughs> mug there. I've uh, got, a, I don't know, the, my Cameron Lego mug and others. Uh, if you go down to the uh, Jesus figurines, these are for children mm. and they're inappropriate. Um, Praise him. Jesus is a little too close to the little boy. And the other one is, uh, uh, this kid's just plow- shoulder tackling our Lord and Savior. It's just, you know... That's good, not okay. Good entertainment. Um, so let's see. Underne- <laughs> He's chop blocking Jesus yeah. is what's happening. Yeah. So. Like, I mean, where where's the O-line? <laughs> <laughs> That's... Yeah. Oh my God. There you go. Um, uh, under that, we got. Did no Cal- one pick up that kid? Did no one pick up that vlogger? <laughs> um, uh, we got Calvin's slide whistle right there. Um, I have a alligator head. I, I don't have the alligator back scratcher. I don't know where it went. I need to find it. But um, um, yeah, so Calvin slide whistle. Over here, we've got uh, our very own the actual table topics. Uh, cards. Uh, we have a Canadian flag, which was sent in by one of our Canadian listeners. Uh, underneath it, uh, Chad donated nice uh, Toby Mac's uh, book to represent our former feud with the, Toby Mac. Yeah, and the only reason that I donated it was because I've pretty much read every page in that book. Yeah, just so you guys <laughs> know. Multiple times. Well, multiple, at, any, multiple at, any, times. at any staff gathering, you know, uh, cupcakes for a birthday, anything, somebody coming or going, uh, Chad reads a passage. Completely out of context. From the Toby Mac book. That's sweet. So yeah. just a little nugget of inspiration. Man. Toby Mac. DC Talk, so awesome. Mac still. is back, all right. The top hat right there, obviously, is the official Oscars.biz Awards yeah. top hat. Mm-hmm. Coming up on that, we're going to have to uh, we've got those the, off. We got the white gloves, we yeah. got the bow ties, yep. oh, yeah. and uh, the Oscars.biz top so hat. So the, the most formal uh, day of the year. Uh, on on the bottom the shelf <laughs> down there, we got uh, not only the, uh, the banana slicer, uh, we've got the hot dog slicer oh, yeah. a listener sent in. Um, and it's signed because those listeners came by our studio uh, a couple weeks ago. <laughs> Dude, they really and, that's and so they signed the back of it for us. That's awesome. That's yeah. cool. And Is that Adam and Eve fornicating? And, and we have Adam and Eve uh, creating humanity. Beautiful. Right there. Yeah. Praise um, him. Bless. So up we have a Orlando Magic or Orlando All-Star Game money ball from the three-point competition um, signed by former podcast guest and former Orlando Magic player Ryan Anderson yes. when he was in the studio. Um, I would say Ryan that was, was in the three point competition. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, it was the, the we hosted the All Star Game the, the, that year. Dwight was leaving, yep. and we just you know ugh, we're just over it. Ryan was our was our our hope 
all of the fans' hopes and dreams were clinging to Ryan doing well in the three-point competition. And he yeah, and he missed the money ball that would have made him go to the final round. Uh, I told him I have I tracked down the actual money ball that you failed with, and he signed it and said, "Sorry, I missed this one." Ryan Anderson. So he wrote that on the ball, and uh, we have that there on the shelf. It was a very uh, kind of him. It was actually the coolest <clears throat> moment of my life as I walked into an Orlando Magic game, and he saw me and did like the "What's up" head thing. Yeah, I would say that was the coolest I've ever felt. Yeah, yeah. he didn't say Adam, hi. Let, let me ask: While they're going through these, is there anything that 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 you were hoping would be there? Anything I was hoping. Well, would be hold there? on. We have a couple Adam <laughs> era ones that we're about to get to, and okay. then we'll figure out what did we miss yeah. and should complete the wall with. Just settle down, Jesse. Uh, <laughs> we got a couple of uh, knight's armor glove things from our medieval times oh, right. adventure. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. And up there at the top, we have a chimpanzee, uh, just reminding us of the looming. It's kind of looking down at us, the looming impending chimpocalypse that's coming. Right. We all know it's happening. We have right here a big one Indian head. Uh, that's actually something that I've had with me since college. But on the top of his feather is Jungle Bird's actual hat. Yes. Um, did you? Where did you order that hat? Because I went online before too, and they they've been sold out. We. Uh, I just googled Jungle Bird's hat. No, what's it called? The Yankee. It, it, it? The, it, it's a. Um, Union, Union Jack. Jack. Union Jack. I googled Union Jack hat, found it. It was like an Etsy store that I found it on, so I ordered I ordered it. Wow. Um, let's see. Down underneath it, we got the uh, cat catalog that some listeners sent us that smells like pee. Oh, terrible. It smells yeah. terrible. Yeah. And, uh, what is with that, the candy bars? Well, the, the, we have a retail box of Toggy bars. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse, Jesse's Toggy bar story. Yeah, uh, this is a, a, a an old classic, and I don't even know. I've told, I've retold some stories before. I don't even know if I could accurately tell this one again. I'd probably have to listen to it again. It involved a, a, an awkward interaction at a movie theater with a gentleman that was selling those for some manner of fundraiser. Uh, maybe uh, some astute listener can put in the feedback what episode that uh, appeared on. Uh, but uh, it, it was again. I like moments that that everyone else feels awkward, and I could just sit and relish it. And uh, those toggy bars uh, were, were one of the finest moments I experienced. And wow. it's a delicious snack for any podcast uh, studio tour visitors. Right. You know, we, we right. end it with a toggy bar snack. There you go. Um, See how much they really know about the show. Up there on the on the far left, we're using it to support a local high school marching band. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to visit, buy a toggy bar for a dollar. <laughs> Up there on the far left, we have a huge ship. A uh, classic. Yeah. And, and uh, last but not least, we have a whale shark right there. <laughs> uh, that, that was one of my favorite uh, Adam and Jesse era stories was the I whale shark. I love the fact that the, the whale shark model you found, the expression on his face is one of absolute stupidity. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow you found, I, I know that there's probably not too many models that would make a whale shark look majestic, <laughs> but, but somehow you, you found the antithesis of majesty. Well, what we learned years ago from you guys is that uh, the whale shark is not neither whale nor shark, which would be awesome, which would be a whale sized shark. No. It's kind of like a manatee uh, and it's girth. It just It's just taken up a lot of space that other cooler animals in the ocean. <laughs> um, in addition to the wall, we have uh, some pieces of art. Uh, a couple of pieces uh, watching us, almost human size, they're so large. Right there we have John Tesh, who was a centerpiece of an episode a couple years ago. John Tesh joining us. And we, of course, have a large frame portrait of Rambo. <laughs> Obviously. Been probably the cornerstone of this show. Yeah. Right. Rambo, more than any other uh, probably figure, has, has shown up throughout the years. Uh, so, of course, we had to, you, you know, well, immortalize them with a, a portrait. That's indicative of our lives, isn't it? That Rambo, <laughs> more, than, more than any other figure, Rambo has really influenced most of our lives. Mm -hmm. yeah.